So we finally have some good news as it relates to the Democratic Party primary taking place in the 11th Congressional District of Ohio, featuring Nina Turner, of course, and Chantel Brown. And when I say there's good news, it's good news for Nina Turner, but not so much for her opponent, Chantel Brown. Now, she's been getting a lot of good news lately because she's been quickly catching up to Nina Turner, thanks to dark money that is flooding this race. But unfortunately for her... Taking legalized bribes and having lots of conflicts of interest at some point is going to catch up with you. And unfortunately for Chantel Brown, it's catching up with her before an election, which she could possibly win. But now, I mean, this news is giving voters in the 11th Congressional District of Ohio a lot more to consider. So in an article for Newsweek, Walker Bragman and Andrew Perez of the Daily Post report, with a week to go before the special primary election for Ohio's 11th congressional district, Democratic candidate Chantel Brown may be in hot water. In April, The Intercept reported that Brown, a Cuyahoga County Council member, had voted to award millions worth of contracts to companies connected to her romantic partner and campaign donors. Emails reviewed by The Daily Poster show that the Ohio State Auditor's Office reviewed the allegations in the article and recently referred the matter to the State Ethics Commission. Wow. Under Ohio law, public officials are prohibited from knowingly authorizing or using their authority or influence to secure authorization of any public contract in which the public official, a member of the public official's family, or any of the public official's business associates has an interest. Violation of the statute is a felony and penalties can include prison time. The Intercept reported in April that Brown, who had pledged to recuse herself as necessary from contracts involving her partner, Mark Perkins, had used her position as a Cuyahoga County Commissioner to help steer $17 million in contracts to Perk. Perk was founded with Perkins' uncle but is now owned by the Stefani family, who have long established business ties to the Perkins family and who have supported Brown's campaigns for office. The Intercept noted that in February of 2017, weeks after approval of one of those contracts for $7 million, Perk hosted a fundraiser for Brown's re-election campaign. This is very very clearly pay to play. According to emails provided to the Daily Poster in April, the Intercept story was forwarded to the Ohio Attorney General's office. The following month, an official in the Attorney General's office noted in an email that she discussed the matter with an attorney in the state auditor's office. We are both of the opinion that it makes sense for the auditor's office to review, and we also believe that this might end up being a case that is referred to the Ethics Commission, the official wrote. The Intercept's report was forwarded to the auditor's office, and according to a June 2nd email from a representative of the office's special investigations unit. The matter has now been sent to the Ohio Ethics Commission, the state's official public corruption watchdog for review. The recommendation by the special audit task force was to refer this matter to the Ohio Ethics Commission for its review and consideration, noted the email. The auditor of state strives to make sure all matters are referred to the agency which has jurisdiction. For this reason, the auditor of state is referring this matter to the above-mentioned agency. Now, let me just put everything into perspective for you. Basically, in the United States of America, we allow legalized bribes. So if you are going to be probed by any ethics watchdog or you're actually going to be fined for campaign finance violations, you have to do a lot. You have to be really brazen. And at this point, legally, she's not culpable. She's just being investigated, or at least an ethics watchdog from Ohio is looking into this. But the fact that she's so brazen that even in our system with very lax corrupt uh, corruption laws, she is now in hot water possibly. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. And of course, we're not going to learn much about this before the election, but this is, this is pretty brazen behavior to award money from your position as a public official to companies which you have a connection to personally, and then companies then do fundraisers for you. I mean, this is this is so explicit. I mean, I, I think that's pretty obvious to everyone. Now, thankfully, Nina Turner was already aware of this, and she cut an ad about this very specific topic. And um, we're going to watch that right now. I'm Nina Turner, and I approve this message.
Chantel Brown. We've seen self-serving politicians like her before, using office to enrich friends, family, even themselves. On council, Brown voted to give more than $32 million in taxpayer contracts to a company connected to her boyfriend and family. She even voted to give herself a $7,000 pay raise for a part-time job on council. A slap in the face to working people. Chantel Brown, out for herself. That is a great ad. And honestly, Chantel Brown should be embarrassed. Like, from the very beginning of this campaign, she has shown nothing but desperation in, a, in an attempt to defeat Nina Turner. Uh, and, and she basically is coordinating with Super PACs. I cover the story. It, it was an article from The Intercept written by Ryan Grimm. He did a great job here. But basically, uh, candidates try to subvert the laws that prohibit campaigns from coordinating directly with their super PACs by creating a red box on their website. And they'll basically put all of their talking points and opposition research on their opponents in this red box. And basically, this red box is the signal to their super PAC letting them know, hey, this is what I want you to talk about. And she basically was begging and pleading with super PACs to support her. They then did flood this race. You have super PACs uh, such as DMFI being bankrolled by an oil and gas heir, and she takes all of this money willingly so. And it's just, she's not running because she cares about the people of Ohio's 11th congressional district. That's obvious. Nina Turner actually does care. Nina Turner is running on policies like Medicare for All. Nina Turner is only taking money from the people. She's taking small grassroots donations or small dollar donations uh, from grassroots organizers and supporters. Whereas Chantel Brown, she'll take whatever she can get. And now she has super PACs lying about Nina Turner on her behalf. So it's just, it's embarrassing. And I'm glad that finally all of this corruption is catching up to Chantel Brown. And I hope that it's too late. I hope that she doesn't have time to change the narrative because people are just going to learn about this. And it's devastating. Like, if I see this story, this absolutely changes my opinion about a politician, even if it were the case that um, this story were reversed and Nina Turner was the one who did something like this, I would immediately feel grossed out and really have to rethink my support for someone like Nina Turner, even if I agreed with her politically. Because if somebody is that brazen and that shameless in offering, you know, benefits to people who they know personally, who they're romantically involved with, of course, they're not going to look out for you once they get elected. So I think this is obvious. I'm glad that Nina Turner has already decided to run with the story, and I'm glad that this is getting publicized because people need to know about this. Chantel Brown is a phony. She's a fake. She has conflicts of interest that have led to her now being possibly um, investigated or actually watchdogs are indeed looking into it. And um, good. But I mean, we shouldn't just look into people like Chantel Brown, all conflicts of interest should be investigated in Congress. So, you know, this issue is systemic and the issue with Chantel Brown is a microcosm of a bigger issue within the United States of America and rampant corruption. Having said that, though, when it comes to this race, it is really important that voters know now so that they don't make the mistake of electing Chantel Brown over Nina Turner. So they don't make the mistake of getting duped by super PACs who are trying to bankroll uh, the opponent of Nina Turner so they get an extra puppet in Congress. They already have hundreds of other puppets. Let progressives, let the people actually have this one candidate for once. But they're not. So we have to keep fighting and go to bat for Nina Turner. And some other good news regarding Nina Turner's campaign, she was endorsed by the Women's March. And on top of that, I have referenced a Get Out the Vote campaign in an earlier video, which features uh, Bernie Sanders, Cori Bush, Keith Ellison, and now Cornell West, the legend himself, will be appearing at the Get Out the Vote campaign for Nina Turner. So look, I've been very doom and gloom lately as it relates to this campaign because I don't like to see someone who is just shamelessly corrupt and a corporatist catch up with someone who actually cares about human beings and the lives of people in the 11th Congressional District of Ohio. But now this story has kind of um, made me feel a little bit more optimistic, albeit cautiously, but we have to keep fighting. We have to keep fighting because even though this is bad news for Chantel Brown, she has a lot of money on her side and they can try to spin this, you know, at this point in the race, it's going to be difficult. But still, it's important that people know this. So share this story far and wide because this has to be known. People in this district need to know what they're getting with Chantel Brown and hopefully they don't make the wrong decision.